Okay, so question number 15 on the skills review. It says, if I have 90 inches, how many feet and extra inches is that? So we can just start with the baseline of knowing that well, there are 12 inches in a foot. So every time I subtract 12 out of the 90, that's calculating a foot. So how many times can I do that? So if I have 90 divided by 12, it gets me, 90 divided by 12, gets me 7.5, okay? So I get 7.5, but it asks for feet and inches. Do I have 0.5 inches? No, I have half of a foot. How many inches is in half of a foot? There are six, you bet. So it means I have seven feet and six inches. If you weren't totally sure on that, if you took this 0.5 and multiplied it by how many a hole was, you would get six as well, which can help you out with that. Okay, if you have 56 feet, how many yards and additional inches is that? What you gonna do? Okay, glad. Uh, okay, uh, 50, 50, okay, so yes, we're gonna take 56. So how many feet we have and divide it by how many feet are in a yard. So 56 divided by three gives me 18.6666 and so on. You guys should know what this means as a fraction. What is 0.6 indefinitely as a fraction? This is a benchmark value. You have 18 yards and how many feet? What is this? It's going to be two feet because this value as a fraction is two thirds. Two thirds. So we have 18 and two thirds yards, which in this case, because it's a three, it's going to be two feet. Yeah. Um, um, and actually one of the inches not, if this was yards, I'm sorry, I would have kept it as this is the answer, but it wants it in feet. Um, so if I just took the 0 0.66666 times it by three, guess what? I'm gonna get two. So 18 yards and two feet. Okay. Kilometers, meters, millimeters, things like that. Okay. So there's some key, pieces in the, the metric system to let us know their value, okay? So the meter is the baseline meter, okay? So we kind of think of it as like, it's close to a yard, okay? Um, and then if you, we have a larger value, okay? So we have yards and everything, but then we then have for a really long distance, we have miles, right? So this would be our yards and um, our larger distance is miles. Well, one meter, a kilometer has the base of kilo, which means a thousand. So a kilometer is a thousand meters. 
the, the American standard units are not this friendly. Uh, all right, Jake's trying to get in. Okay, then opposite of that, we also then have smaller values. We need to break our meter up into smaller values. And that's where, so, so, meter. so a smaller unit, we could think of it as our inch, you know, the, the closest metric system's closest value to an inch would be a centimeter. So we have a centimeter. Okay, centi is saying hundredths. It takes a hundred of these to equal one of these. So centi is a hundred, kilo is a thousand, it's a thousand meters. It's um, a thousand or a hundredth of a meter. It takes a hundred of these to make one of these. And then even smaller than this is a millimeter. Milli is thousandths. It takes a thousand of these to equal one of these. So if you're looking at a ruler, it's those individual little teeny tiny marks. So 1,000 millimeters equals one meter. 100 centimeters equals one meter. And 1,000 meters equals one kilometer. All right, so these are some baselines. Again, go ahead and Google it. Go ahead and Google it. But we just do want to know that the millimeter, there might even be two L's in that. The millimeter is teeny, 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 tiny, itty bitty. It's like the width of a fingernail, okay? So if you're needing to measure the length of something and it is just itty bitty microscopic, you're going to be using a millimeter because it's about the thickness of a fingernail. Then if you're measuring something small, but not quite as microscopic, the width of your finger is a centimeter. Well, it depends if you have sausage fingers, then maybe it might be a little more than that, but approximately, okay? So, and then if you think of a meter, you can think of it as the distance of your arm, okay? And then kilometers is if you're needing a really, really, really long space, okay? So a person, are you gonna measure it in fingernail, finger widths, or arms. I'm going to measure a person in in arm lengths because it's going to take fewer of them. It's going to take a lot of these. So you will be asked on the test, hey, which one of these would you use for measuring the height of a door? Which one would you use for measuring um, the length of a shoe or for measuring um, you know the the length of a carrot or uh, the size of an ant? So just knowing which one's the smallest, which one's the largest, and then what's the practical application of them, okay? Uh, similar to that is going to also be the weight. The metric system uses grams, and similar to this whole meter, if we have grams, okay, it's, it's their, um, their baseline unit, and so then to make a really heavy thing would be kilograms because that would be a thousand grams. So kilo are always the larger quantities. Um, then we can have um, milligrams, okay? So as far as a gram, I believe it is approximated the weight of a paper clip. So if you take a paper clip, that's about a gram. So that's why people are measured in kilograms. Because it's going to take a lot of this to equate to this, okay? Um, so we have the larger units of measurement for that. Paper clip for grams. Then if you need a milligram weight-wise, you can think of it as a grain of sand. So a milligram, beep, 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 beep. okay? Speck of dirt, the weight of a speck of dirt, okay? Uh, that's that practical application. And then for volume, volume is liquid or the amount of space something takes up. That is going to be with liters. Okay. Again, liters is the middle value. Kilo, kiloliters would be a thousand liters. 
Um, I do not even know what would be approximate to that. Um, but um, it, would, it would have that much volume. Doesn't really matter. It's just going to be something very big. You'd definitely be using like pools. You'd be measuring their, their volume of liquid using kilo, kilo, kiloliters. Um, and then smaller than that would be a milliliter. Okay. A milliliter is equivalent to a cc. So if you've ever had to use a syringe or had, you know, the little liquid, the liquid um, medications that you can take, you get the little cup and only about that far is 10 milliliters because it's, it's basically like a few drops of liquid is equivalent to a milliliter. So that's why it's a very small, um, a small quantity. So Mila, 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 itty bitty, kilo is large. All right, so we got that. Um, 70 kilometers to meters. So kilo means a thousand meters. So if I have a thousand meters 70 times, how much do I have? Seventy thousand. You bet. I just tack on a whole bunch of zeros. You bet. And this is one of the great things about the metric system is you're only you're keeping the numbers the same, and you're either just like adding zeros or taking zeros away. It's really nice. You're just moving decimals around. Um, if you have four thousand eight hundred milliliters to meters, so. This is where the proportions can be happy, uh, uh, helpful. Uh, was it liters or uh, meters? Okay, one meter is 1,000 millimeters. Okay, so once we have that, if I then have 4,800 of these, I'm basically just adding decimal places on here. It takes a thousand meters to equal one, and I have four thousand millimeters. Guess what? I have four point eight meters. So, because we're just taking what we have and dividing out how many it takes to make a whole one. Forty-eight hundred divided by one thousand is four point eight meters. Okay. I will say one of our stupidest units of measurement is pounds and ounces. 16, really? Who came up with 16? It's just the most annoying number ever. Okay, uh, we are, so it's just a matter of meters, millimeters. So if we have 0.5 meters, we don't know how many, many millimeters that is, but I know one meter equals a thousand millimeters. What is, how many millimeters do I have? So, cause we can think of this as if I have half of a meter, it means I have half of these millimeters. It's gonna be 500. Yeah, so because we could go five times one is five, and then I have one decimal problem in the answer, so I add one decimal place to a thousand, which leaves me at 500, and one times x is just x. Yeah, 500. Okay, let's skip down to 21. You have the answer sheets for this, and uh, oh, before I forget, don't do 39 through 42 that have to deal with Celsius and Fahrenheit. It's not on the test and it's an annoying formula to have to deal with. Save yourself the time, don't do it, okay? Um, but the rest of them can apply, okay. Let's... So if we have 208 ounces, how many pounds is that going to be? We need to get establish our baseline. 
one LB, abbreviation for pound, is 16 OZ. So if I have 208 of those, how many of those do I have? What you gonna do? Thirteen. You bet, because we're just taking the number of ounces that we have and basically just dividing it by how many ounces makes up a pound. And in doing so, it lets us have 13. So we get 13 pounds for our answer. Um, let's go ahead and do 23, where I, if it says I have two and one half pounds, how many ounces is that? How am I gonna figure that out? Um, five halves times 16 over one, very good, yes. We need to multiply this by the number of ounces in a pound. And because fractions are snobs and don't like to multiply when there is a whole number involved, you have to convert this. Two times two is four plus one. So I have five halves times 16, and we need to put it over one. Just to make it easier, I can go ahead and cross cancel. Two divides by two, 16 divides by two to make eight. So five times eight gives me 40. So that would be 40 pounds. Or no, not sorry, not 40 pounds. Oh, thank you, Mara, for writing the correct unit of measurement. It helps to pay attention. 40 ounces. That would be 40 ounces. Ooh. Because that makes sense if we take, if we have 16 twice, we've got 32. And then we've got another additional half of 16, which is eight, 32 and eight is going to be a 40. Um, okay. Um, it's just a continuation of this. Uh, I know sometimes you guys get freaked out over fractions. So let's look at 31 where it says I have 12 and a half quarts, how many pints is that? Okay. Well, one quart is made up of two pints. So if I have 12 and a half quarts, how many pints? What you gonna do with that? Um, so convert this, yeah, to 25 halves, and for each that you have, there are two pints. So, oh, just a second. Just a second. All right. All right. So then it's saying that there are two pints for every quart. So this basically cancels out to get, there are 25 pints in two quarts, okay? Yeah, we're doubling that. Okay. Um, yeah, and you can think of it, if I have two pints for every quart, I have 12 quarts, I have two 12 times for 24, and then an extra half of two, which is one. So 24 and one is, 25. Okay. Um, beyond the rest of that, I 
think just looking up conversion rates online to having a baseline, you know, using your proportional method, checking out the answer sheets should help you out. So um, we will move on to the other study guide.